Well, let's get straight into it because, as I say, we've got vehicle sales up 11.69% uh, year on year, but dropping back on a month on month basis. So, yes. progress being made, but to what extent are you concerned that we're possibly losing momentum at this stage? Um, I'm not that concerned that we're losing momentum. In the, in the second half of the year, it's traditional that sales increase to, to fleets and to governments directly by the manufacturer. And what we've seen in, in November is a correction of these numbers towards a, a greater component being sold through the dealer market. Mm -hmm. So what we saw in, in, in November was a move of almost 9% from government and fleet sales into the, um, the dealer sales environment. And uh, an average dealer sales rate, which is exactly in line with what has occurred in the past two months. And broadly speaking, I mean, year-to-date expectations seem to be uh, falling in line, just over a 16% increase coming through for the year so far. Yes, Alicia. Initially, it was predicted to be in the region of between 10 and 15%. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will definitely come in, uh, I would expect, over 16% now. Okay. I wanted to highlight the co possible concern that you hold, and you say that there's not too much concern. Given the fact that we're operating in a context where you've got consumers coming under pressure, you've got disposable income likely to come under further pressure down the line, and specifically on account of that inflation number rising. Yes. Those infl inflationary expectations not too good are really painting a somber picture. So let's factor that into the equation. I think if we factor it in, uh, Alicia, then we see that our, our expectations for next year is not anywhere near the current 16% level. So for next year, the the most accepted uh, expectation is in the region of between 5 and 7%. And 5 so, and 7%, yes, so quite a drop from where we are right now. Absolutely, yes. But then we, we need to bear in mind that uh, we, we had a fairly high base given the, the performance of the market over the past three years. Okay. Let's drill down further into the health of the consumer because, uh, you know, some of the factors that will come to bear is that that debt-to-income ratio still sitting high. It's at levels of 75.9%. Uh, but having said that, we are seeing a change in the way consumers are opting to finance, looking for longer term periods of finance, for example, to really get what they want still in, yes. this, uh, in these very uh, tough economic conditions. Yeah, you're absolutely spot on. There, there's a continued increase in the demand for longer term finance and for, for applications or people wishing to buy cars without uh, deposits. Mm -hmm. So we see the current level of, of terms longer than 60 months at around 63% and those coming in uh, with no deposits at around 60%. With consumers then looking at their finances a little bit more uh, cautiously at this stage of the game, I mean, to what extent is that having an impact on your impairment credit records? Our impairments uh, are fortunately improving. And we, we found too, if we take a comparison of October and November, that in November we, we saw 11 or 12 percent more applications for, for finance with an approval rate that was equivalent to the, the prior month. So it's showing that there is a move or there was a demand for, for finance in November that exceeded that of the, the prior two months. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the quality of the approvals staying the same or the level of approvals staying the same indicate that there hasn't been a deterioration in the quality of the through-the-door applicant. But to what extent are we seeing a change in the kind of purchase these consumers are opting yeah, to make? Alicia, them? definitely uh, the, the more affordable vehicles. The more definitely, affordable vehicles, yes. so those are becoming more affordable within the new vehicle category. So how is it comparing to the kind of sales you're seeing on the used side of things? Because yeah. you, you've still got consumers that are highly indebted, as we highlighted earlier, and finding it difficult to obtain credit because of the tougher banking uh, regulations and conditions that are currently yes. in place. Uh, the, uh, a large proportion of the, the sales in the new car side are affordable cars. Um, but uh, somebody that, that can uh, afford an entry-level new car whose circumstances change and requires a vehicle that may be slightly bigger would then be looking for it in the used market at similar values. Mm -hmm. So the, the need or the demand for quality used cars is still very big, although we've also seen that uh, there's been a drop in our ratio of, of used finance to new. So in, in the past months, we've seen a, a drop in the number of, of used cars that we financed in relation to those new. To what extent are you honing in on the pricing right now? Because you speak about affordability. Yes. What kind of pricing status are we looking at and what kind of escalations have we seen over the period this year? Well, in, in terms of new and used vehicles, new vehicles have increased with 4%, which makes them 
in real terms negatively priced mm -hmm. uh, year on year. And the used vehicle prices or increase in prices that we've seen is in the region of 3%. So we've got that happening on the domestic side of things. Let's take a look at our export potential because there was a point where we were doing well. I mean, year to date, uh, we're looking at a 17% increase, roughly speaking. But uh, month on month, a decline coming through there. And uh, if you're looking at things on a year on year basis as well, a decline coming through there. And some uh, safe to assume that it's reflective of the global economic scenario. Uh, certainly an impact on it. The, dem the global demand drives the e exports, obviously. But what we've also seen in, uh, in November was a shift uh, from one of our, our big manufacturers uh, mm -hmm. from the export line to the, the retail line. And I think it had a lot to do with market leadership. Yeah. When it comes to supply issues, I mean, you've got South Africa exporting to a global market that has been constrained by a shared uh, experience and that with regards to the tsunami that happened over in Japan. Yes. How's that scenario played itself that, out? Um, that is largely behind uh, the, or no longer impacting on the availability of stock in, in South Africa. But what uh, has happened in the interim now is, is the disaster in Thailand, which hasn't been quite as much in the news maybe as the tsunami, but it has also and is likely to affect the availability of, of certain manufacturers' vehicles in our market in, in the coming three to four months.